So I'm really, really pleased to welcome uh, Karsten first from uh, Desk Mag here. Hello! <laughs> Eric van der Broek from Mutinerie. Hello, Eric. And Anne de Malleret, who is a journalist and working for Kronos. My name is Maeva Tordo. I am in charge of the Blue Factory, which is a startup incubator based in five cities in Europe. And uh, I'm really happy to uh, moderate this The Future of Connected Work panel. First of all, I would like to know a bit who is, uh, we would like to know who is in the room. Um, do we have uh, people working in co-working here? Right. Do we have people who created or are work, working for a co-working? Okay. Do we have freelancers? Do we have people working in a company that doesn't look like a co-working? Uh, what the hell? Okay. What Entrepre <laughs> do we have entrepreneurs? entrepreneurs? I guess, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, and I forgot many other people, but the singers and the poets and the dancers are also welcome. Um, so the, the title, The Future of Connected Work, was a bit tricky, because what does mean connected work was something we, we thought about. Uh, there's uh, the um, overwhelming of the Wi-Fi that we all need to be connected to work now, and whatever, there's no Wi-Fi, we're really so sad. There's this idea of co-working space also, the place where everybody is connected, the fact that now you're working with people from a lot of different places in the world that are different competencies that you don't have and that you connect, and so I'm really pleased to start to know a bit more about who is this a worker of the 21st century, uh, and you you studied a bit about this agility yeah. of the of the worker. Can you tell us a bit about? It? Well, um, hello everybody. Um, so Kronos is a, a think tank working mostly on uh, mobility issues, and uh, the idea is to see how people develop strategies and uh, new agilities to uh, cope with their mobility problems, which are more and more impo impo important in uh, big cities. And they got interested in uh, work also, because it's um, there's a huge link with mobility, because 25% of uh, uh, displacement are linked to work. And these displacement are for workers who are working in uh, in uh, traditional offices, one of the most uh, difficult uh, type of uh, displacement. Um, so they conducted a, a survey about mobility and work, and uh, they discovered that 37% uh, of workers are working outside of their offices, and um, and they uh, made a typology of different types of workers. And uh, a new category appeared, which is the hyper agile, so hyper agile in French, uh, worker, um, who is um, very mobile, who is connected through lots of devices who uh, can easily uh, make relationships and um, that makes him actually um, it, it well it makes him um, work in a different way and he can adapt to uh, a new um, ecosystem of work who is demanding people to be flex more flexible and uh, more um, autonomous, um, I don't know the word in autonomous, autonomous yes. <laughs> um, it's not the majority of workers, actually. There is a minority, but it's a growing majority, uh, minority, sorry, of workers who are becoming hyper agile. And um, the, so this is ki kind of an introduction, actually, to this debate, because the, qu the question we can, we can ask is, do we, can we be uh, disconnected as a worker? And what's happening for people who are not hyper-agile workers? 
And so in the future, is hyperagility a model for uh, workers? And, and um, uh, if we are not hyperagile workers, what is the future for you know, us? So I think the, these guys who are uh, hyperagile workers <laughs> and working with hyperagile people can maybe answer that. Yeah, first of all, I would say that um, <coughs> the possibility that everything is more flexible or that that you can work wherever you want um, doesn't mean that the people also do this. So actually the main question I would have is uh, what you understand if you say the people are, ha are hyper flexible that they change the office, um, the workplace, or that they're able to change it. Um, that f that would be interesting for me. Um, what I can say about, I mean, probably I can start with a small um, presentation. Yeah, and introduce. Yeah, uh, so um, uh, can you start a presentation which is on your computer? So I prepared a few figures. Um, I mainly can talk about co-working, not <coughs> about um, all the flexible workers in general. Um, so, um, yeah. I'm Uh, can, can you go to the next slide? So that's actually our website, um, and uh, we also uh, we started it um, in 2010, mid of uh, mid of 2010, and since then we conducted three surveys about co-working. Um, so we had a lot of questions for co-working spaces, and also um, for people who work in co-working spaces. You can go to the next slide. <coughs> So in this time, we actually could um, see um, a high increase of, um, of, of the number of co-working spaces. So two years ago, you only had 700. Um, the figures are from February, uh, so now it's May. And we uh, now have more than 2,500 co-working spaces worldwide. And um, you also can see it was al almost doubling. It's not uh, doubling anymore, I mean, on this super high level, but it's still a lot. Uh, in, uh, but on the other hand, the co-working spaces become much bigger, which you can see on the next slide, on this slide. Uh, you have now more than 100,000 people who work in co-working spaces. This is f when you talk about it's a niche, you know, um, but it's a, a strongly growing niche. And uh, you also can see that it's more than doubling. And so, and <coughs> you also can see that um, on, on one hand, you have a lot of people who s still start co-working spaces, um, but on the other hand, the uh, increase is also driven by the uh, existing co-working spaces. Um, so we ask a question if people, if co-working spaces would like to expand with their location or to, uh, would like to move to a bigger location or would like to open another location, and two-thirds of the co-working spaces said yes. Uh, um, probably you can talk about this. Later, uh, can you go to the next slide? And we also ask people why they like to work at a co-working space. Uh, what's the main reason? The main reason is uh, <coughs> interaction, actually, so um, that they have a that they can work in a social enjoyable atmosphere, that they can work within a community and interaction. It's actually almost um, the same thing. I'm sure, it's also good to have a good uh, office infrastructure. Otherwise, you can co work in a coffee shop. And um, all the other things. <coughs> this is interesting here for for this hyper flexibility. You can see, I mean, people also um, like to work at the at a place where which offers flexible work times or an easy easy to change workplace. But it's not the main reason. So it's it's just one of um, one of a lot of other reasons. Um, can you go to the next slide? And then we also ask people, what has changed since you work in a co-working space? And we um, did it with uh, almost 20 characteristics, and it was always positive or negative, so the people could say, could, uh, could say yeah, my social circle has increased or decreased, uh, or the business network or the productivity. And here on this slide, you see all the, all the things which have changed in a positive way. So um, the majority says uh, or reports that the social circle and the business network has increased. The people feel more productive. Um, they feel more self-confident, which I think is also interesting. 
um, and uh, relevant to say um, they're more creative. Um, then there's another thing a lot of people say, eh, when I work at a co-working space, it's so noisy, I cannot focus on my work. Actually, 64% um, say they are more able to uh, uh, focus on the work and also the <coughs> quality of the work has changed. But um, as I said, we also asked um, about the negative impacts. So uh, people feel less isolated. It's actually not that negative. <laughs> but it, um, it was like, I mean, less isolated. And uh, sh here you also can see yeah, some people um, say they, they, they are less able to focus on work. They are, cannot uh, produce, uh, cannot fulfill tasks in a given time. But to be honest, only uh, compared to all the positive Im impacts, it's um, um, yeah, it's not that relevant. So that has been a short introduction about the COVID movement. <coughs> yes. Deeper insights. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, uh, what, what I think is very interesting with co-working is not so much the co-working movement in itself, but what's, what we are learning through the co-working movement. And all these, all these uh, things are, are very interesting. When you, when you see that people, for instance, uh, mobile or agile work workers, and the, lots of people say people you know, now are selfish and they, they want to work on their own and they're ind individualistic. And what, what people, uh, you know, why people go into co-working space is to find... Uh, other people, which is uh, one of the main reasons, and it, I think it's very, very interesting. It so it, it really makes us wonder what's the role of the of the workplace. It's not it's not a place where it's not just about the infrastructure that you're going to find. It's about the the people what, that you're going to find and the IG that are going to flow um, in this uh, in this space. And I think it's something that is not um, something that just apply to the co-working spaces, but apply to a any company. Like, how do you imagine your 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 uh, your your offices. What what's your, what's your headquarters look gonna look like? And I think what my, my opinion on that is that it's gonna be more like a co-working space, something something that focuses on on the interaction between people, and uh, maybe and and that's gonna be connected to co-working spaces uh, for 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 production times, for instance. You can be alone and work and work in co-working spaces, and sometimes you go back to your to your to your HQ and 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 speak to other people in your company. So what I think is like. It's you. You can the numbers of co-working is are impressive. I mean, it's growing. It's uh, it's 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 an impressive infrastructure that has been uh, put in place in less than six years. Um, now we are we are working um, with uh, Stefano from Co-working Roma here. Uh, we're working on a project called Copas to connect all these co-working spaces together to able p to enable people to go from one place to another. What I think is very interesting with that is I think it opened new doors and new possibilities for uh, co-working spaces and for workers in general because it um, for instance it, it would it would enable little spaces on the countryside or near a beach to 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 open doors and to be connected to to major co-working spaces and so co-workers could could you just choose to to go you know to take a week off not off like sim, semi off like semi off and uh, and the work in the morning from from the space, and then ju just go surfing. There is we, we just rediscovered a, a one in the Canary Island that is called the Surf Office, and that's the the whole point of the space. Um, so I, I think I think this this is very interesting. I think it's it's something that is that is going to have an impact on us all, and not just on people that are co-working, but it's just an experiment, and all the learnings are going to come back to the companies. That's what's uh, really interesting. And do do you have any best practices of classical workspace or classical companies which are influenced by this co-working spirit and that are implementing it, like from your survey also, or is there a movement like that is no more like the small place trying yeah. to prototype something, but the classical place that changed its own habits? That, that's uh, I mean it, it's both. I mean we uh, co-working has been influenced also by by companies like Valve, for instance, that is very well known for its uh, organization charts where there is no like there is no boss and people can start project any any time they want and then they just have to find other people to to work on their projects for instance it's something that uh, so they don't have any any fixed um, fixed uh, tables all the tables have wheels and they can move around and 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 form new blocks so for instance it's something that existed before working and that uh, we, we've been inspired by that there's also Pixar I guess the Pixar offices 
that have been created by Steve Jobs at the time. And when you read the reason why he created and how the, the how this space was designed, it's really something that is very close to co-working spaces. You've got a main a central area with a with a coffee-like area where people can can gather. It's kind of, kind of an agora. And then you've got you've got uh, more more private spaces for people to to work and to be to be productive. So all this idea to of you know how how do you articulate what I uh, I often talk about the three P's like proximity, privacy, and permission. How do you how do you create proximity and create friction between your your between people in the company? But how do you preserve some some privacy space some some private spaces for people to work and to to focus? Because what what hap what happened in the survey was that. Uh, if people didn't didn't have choice to speak to to other people, then they, they would they would like they would have less significant significant talk. They ne they needed some space for themselves. And then permission is how do you do you do you make a space speak so that people uh, can feel free to 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 do things to speak with other people, and that is not something that is forbidden by by the management, for instance. Uh, and and uh, what the discovery is in offices, for instance, lots of things happened near the printer. Because it was it was a place where where the bosses uh, would not think that people are not working. It's you know you you you're not losing your time like in a coffee machine. You're you're printing printing things, so you're you're actually at work. But at the same time, there there are other people, so you can talk. And and they they, ob they observed that this very place where you had a permission a higher permission level created more opportunities. So that's you know and and then today yes offices are are changing. I think. The Companies that were born in co-working spaces, they just keep on doing that uh, without even reali realizing it uh, when when they when they when they grow. And uh, spaces like La Roche Kiriwi, I guess, and, uh, here Kiss Kiss Bang Bang have this culture. It's uh, it's it's totally normal for them. They, they don't even realize it. It's not something that they intellectualize. I guess. Um, is there a biggest difference between tra traditional offices and co-working spaces? Is um, if you work in a traditional office as employee, you cannot. You just have your office and you have your colleagues and the boss says where you have to work. And so it actually, um, it doesn't matter uh, if you like it or not, you have to work there. In a co-working space, you can choose the place you work at and you also can leave it whenever you want. That has a big impact on uh, how uh, the workspace looks like because in a co-working space, you need to convince the people um, that they like to work there. In a normal office, you don't need to. Um, but what we can see uh, now, um, just in general is that uh, you have a higher uh, competition uh, between companies to recruit new staff. I mean, especially, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, people with uh, high skills like programmers and so on. And then sh sure, they also then the office is changing so that the people like to work there, that they feel more creative and so on. Um, you have companies such as Google, uh, which definitely do, um, where we can see how it can look like, but you also have to say, um, um, <coughs> for instance, Google, if they start to work or collaborate with a co-working space, it's also a, a lot about promotion. I mean, to promote their products and to promote Android, that the people, that the programmers uh, program uh, Android apps and so on, you know. It's not only about the people. <laughs> Well, I, I, I like uh, Eric uh, very much because he's really optimistic. <laughs> and um, But I, I just wanted to um, say that I think what we are talking about right now is um, happening not everywhere. And, um, and there is still... I mean, it, it's working for uh, companies who are producing services mostly. Um, and it doesn't work, I think, uh, for the moment in uh, big factories who are producing uh, material goods uh, and the situation of workers in these factories is uh, worse and worse actually. And the question is, um, is connected work um, able to, I mean, is are all these thoughts and, and ideas, and is it possible to uh, extend it to the whole, um, I mean, system and to the way like everybody is working? And maybe we can talk. I mean, I think you have a, a Fab Lab project. Maybe you are also involved. No, I, I so would like to make a, a bigger um, 
a deeper <laughs> distinction. Um, I think you have a lot of people in factories which have a good working environment. If you, I don't know, if you work for Volkswagen, you know, and you get paid 6,000 euro a month, um, it's fine. But if you work in Bangladesh in a um, in a factory yeah, where to you produce, you know, this is, uh, you know, um, uh, there are diff a lot of difference between factories, and there are also a lot of difference between between services. If you work for a call center for five euro um, um, uh, an hour, is, and uh, you have a, um, I don't know, a hundred people in a room of fifty square meter, or so you know, it's also not nice. So it's not all. It's um, it, it, it's about um, the people and their skills, and this has a lot of impact. Uh, yeah. yeah, but I think yeah. this system we are talking yeah. about of connected work is really good for people who are yeah. a lot of skills. But is it going to be better than uh, it worse <laughs> for <laughs> people who are not, you know, yeah. who are? Not as highly educated and as mobile and as everything. Um, I mean, what you already can see is um, with the Fab Labs, it's in a very early stage. But if we uh, think about how it could look like in 20 years, um, you probably can say that you also have uh, that people can build their own cars, probably, you know, and then you, you just have a 3D printer. I mean, it needs to be, you know, that's fiction. But um, um, at the moment, you already can uh, produce a lot of uh, things with a 3D printer, and then it uh, also will change the whole way about um, how factories will look like. In, in the future, I would think. I, I also th think that the logics uh, behind co-working can apply to, to, to factories. I mean, it's very, like, it's, this is kind of optimistic, right? But, but when, you, when you look back, like, before the first, before the, the f ma even, even before the second rev uh, industrial revolution, what you saw is that you had some huge, um, some huge places and people would come with their own tools and we were, with their own machines and, and, and build things for the factory. And then the factory just you know just collects everything. So at at the time before we invented the the, the Taylorism and, and all the rationalization of work, uh, actually uh, factory used to work to look very much like a co-working space at the time. And it's not impossible that with new manufacturing technologies that we're talking about, we, we can be we can go back to these kind of of, uh, of uh, places and with with. with while staying efficient and 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 producing a lot and and the thing is i think it's 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 it would be a bit wrong and a bit a bit false to say that uh, you know you see these co-working spaces and and agile and mobile workers and knowledge workers are are you know they 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 are good they are they they, they can do this and it's good for them but the other are paying the price of that it's not it's not the case that the other are pay, are paying the price of something else i mean uh, before co-working happened, all, all this, uh, the factories started started being de delocalized to other countries with uh, lower wages. I, I, don't, I don't think that we should take the responsibility yeah, I mean, when we do things. And, and the other thing is, I think that when something is happening and it's a trend and, it, and it's it's uh, it's uh, it's something that people uh, want and desire, because it's 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 what co-working is about. It's something that resonates into people people's head. Uh, when you when this is starts happening, you cannot just uh, stop it, or or, or beca because it's not for everybody. I mean, uh, you, you don't do anything, and it's something that we do a lot in France. Like there is a good idea, but it's not. It does not apply to everything, so it's not equal. So we stop it, and uh, and I think it sucks. And I think it's you know when 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 something is happening, you you can do, you can you can try to anticipate what what the, the problems that it can you know it can it can um, cause and, and try to, to minimize it and try to, to take the people from the factories and maybe bring them in the, into these kind of spaces so they can, in, can increase their skills and, and being more, more available. Or, or you can change also your, your social um, policies. And, and, and there, there are all these, you know, thinking about the, the um, income, like the, the basic income. I, I, don't, I mean, I don't, ha don't have a, a clear opinion on that because I think it's very complicated. But it's something that is worth uh, thinking of. It's it's the whole social system that we should be uh, re, re rethought. And I, I don't really like this idea of, of we've got the responsibility because we're you know we are very good and we can travel and we can work from islands and the others the, other, the poor others are are stuck in their you know in their factories. It's something that uh, I don't think.
I, I think I didn't say that actually. <laughs> I feel responsible. <laughs> And there's there's another thing. I mean, I, I had a good discussion with um, with uh, <laughs> with Guillaume from uh, La Ruche Guilloui, and he, he's got he's got an interesting theory. It's that uh, it's agriculture is going to be uh, the sector that is going to produce some jobs for for um, less employed, less uh, less you know skilled people. And um, it's true that there is something quite. Um, like it's well perceived to 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 be to work in the agricultural field, and and with all the techniques to improve the productivity, um, going back to the old way ways of doing and using worms and so on, and um, you can create actually a lot of jobs. Like for in, for the moment, we create one job for fifty. How much is the Fifty. <laughs> It's an acre, yeah, that's it. And and uh, and and you could you could you could with using nice techniques, some some people arrived to uh, one job for two acres. So you could you could actually um, create a lot of job. It's an interesting theory as well. Uh, no. <laughs> well, we we arrive in in, <laughs> in the middle of the debate. So I think it's time to bring you to us uh, and to share a bit about that. Do you have any question or testimony of like not agree or agree opinion about all this, yeah. Uh, hello there, I'm Joseph from United Diversity in London. I just wanted, to, there's a company in Brazil called Semco, who are quite famous in certain circles, probably this kind of circles, but they have, for a long time, they've done something similar to co-working in their offices, but uh, roughly half of their employees don't want to do it. So that's fine, like you say, you know, doesn't work for everyone, that's fine. So if you want to come in when you like and not have a fixed desk, you can do that. If you don't and you want a fixed desk, then you have to be in between those hours because they have to pay for that desk sort of thing. So there's, um, I just wanted to agree with you that there's, you know, it doesn't work for everyone, but it doesn't have to work for everyone. And then with factories and things, there's a, there's a cooperative wholesaling food company, so it's not exactly a factory, but it's like a warehousing business, really. And they, for a long time, had what these days is called managed job complexes. You know, so everyone has a, no one stacks shelves for seven days a week. You know, you do it for a couple of days, and then you drive the trucks for a couple of days, and then you sit in the office for a couple of days, and yeah, so I think it can also apply more and more to factory type scenarios. I just wanted to share those examples. Sure, it's it's a very nice example, and I like the idea of just letting people choose. And 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 the thing uh, the thing is when people um, start moving around, because when on Copas we're really on the mobility side, and we think there is a new category of nomads, of people that are re really going to work from anywhere, anytime, and choose their offices when um, when when they want. And uh, maybe this is a small category, but, it, but like like the bees, it's an in, it's a very important category because they are, you know, they are the one carrying carrying the ideas to other spaces and helping these these are the good ideas to spread. And 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 you see you see WeShare, for instance, a uh, good example. It's uh, it was born like uh, originally in in Mutinerie, a lot of people were were working, and now when they organize. Workshops or drinks, or what, they always use co-working spaces in each and every space, and and this idea has been spreading in a like 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 a white fire, and and that's what I like. It's the same about disco soup, like when you when you you're gonna we're gonna do one tomorrow, and it's you get you get vegetables listening to disco music, and um, and, and and you sensibilize people to 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 waste the problem of waste, uh, and this idea. You, I go to another co-working space, I speak about this idea, and the next day it's done. And I, I like this, you know, and even the people that are staying and the 50% 50, 50 that decided to stay benefit from these people moving around. Um, thank you very much for all the, the, the figures and, and the explanation, but um, I work in a co-working place in Lille, uh, and I have the feeling that there are more and more uh, freelancers or uh, workers from startups working in, in co-working, but not many workers from traditional companies. Um, is it typical from France? And do you think that uh, traditional companies will uh, change this? And how can we um, convince them that if we work in a co-working place, it's not that we are not working, but it's more and more efficient? 
Um, I would focus more on independent workers if we would start a coding space because that's the core um, um, that uh, you, uh, co-working means that you work independently uh, together with other people. And so it's um, what, what we can see in our survey is um, half of, um, like more than 50% of the members in co-working spaces are freelancers. Um, you ha also have startups and entrepreneurs, which um, then also hire some employees. And the number of employees is also growing, <clears throat> but it's not the majority. And if you just imagine and you have a traditional company, um, and then um, you have a co-working space with 20 seats, and this company would like to book or to, to rent 15 of them, then it's not a co-working space anymore. There's another thing that I think is, uh, I always tell myself, you should never convince anyone. And, and if you, if you, it, it's a huge waste of time to try convince people. And so you always start with the people that are already, con uh, already convinced. And, and for the moment, the people that are already convinced is, are, are freelancers and entrepreneurs. Because they, you know, they don't have all these processes and all these confidentiality things and so on. So these, they are the ones that are creating, starting the movement. And now, like, we have lots of people going to meet Tineri from, from like the, the com committee of direction of big companies like Le Leroy Merlin, Veolia, and, and so on. Lots of people coming very interested in the topic. But I think they are going to follow the movement. They are not the ones that are going to start the movement. So when they see that, the, it, that it's working, that it's efficient, then maybe they're going to start having some some uh, some some of their employees in that, but it's not. You you should never stop with the the people that you have to convince, or otherwise you're gonna, it's gonna you know it's gonna take you a month for 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 two people, and uh, it's not something that is uh, pleasant to do, and uh, you don't have to ask the permission. Just maybe to add, to add something, I, I think that it's it's about really connect connected work, connected people. So the idea is not really like you work in a co-working space, you work in a big company. It depends on the moment you need to gather with your team. The same in a big company, the thing is that a lot of people are working together, so it's complicated to have one going to this co-working, the other one to this co-working. But for instance, so I'm, I'm working in a business school, and with my team, the thing is that we are totally free to work from wherever you want. Also, I'm traveling a lot, but we have some gathering moments where we need to be together and where we are at the school in our office. But it, it represents maybe half a day in the whole week. And the rest of the time I'm here, I'm working everywhere, I'm meeting the startup, and then I gather with my team. So it's also about like either being inspired by going in a co-working and meeting people you would randomly not meet or serendipity, etc., or being collaborating with people. Yeah, I, I would add something is um that we realized something that now that we were working on on the COPAS and when and we propose a network of spaces, uh, we discover new usages uh, that that are that interest um, big companies. And for instance, uh, if if a company wants to expand in a country and it doesn't have any office there, they are very interested in having an account and sending some of their employee working from there, because because they they can test the market, they can they can uh, meet early adopters as well. So. It's it's just just building a network. Actually, it's uh, it's it answers a need that wasn't uh, answered um, until yet by co-working spaces. And I think it's uh, it's very interesting. I think companies are going to keep offices, but they're going to use more and more co-working spaces for for specific um, for specific topics or, or, or yeah or contracts or so on. And and when they want. To, to expand, for instance, it's a really a moment where, where they would be very interested in that. And I, in the future, I would see like, you know, having some Google employees uh, sometimes going to co-working spaces and also talking about the Google product. I think it's something that, I, that is going to happen uh, sooner or, or later. Hello, uh, I'm Cristina, and uh, I have created a co-working space, a little co-working space in Palermo in Italy. Uh, that is near the sea, so it could be interested for your network. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's happened in Italy is that uh, uh, the freelancer workers uh, has not the basic rights, uh, and uh, 
uh, we we pay a lot of taxes and we have no right, for example, about health or motherhood and things like that. So uh, what we are trying to do is also to uh, use the co-working space as a laboratories where we discuss uh, these kind of problems and try to struggle, struggle about it. And I will know if you um, if you know other places, other co-working spaces that are connected with social movement uh, or doing something that's similar about uh, the work rights. Kirsten, you did something with the world, right? Um, yeah, but uh, not in Italy. <laughs> so I actually cannot say a lot about um, uh, the freelancer rights in Italy. So, but uh, I mean, what, 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 I mean, you can use co-working spaces. Um, or if you, I mean, the problem of freelancers usually is um, they work independent, and um, so it's kind of complicated to um, build an association with a lot of independent people because they also um, think <laughs> very independent. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> uh, um, so you you need to look for some topics you like to work on together, and uh, which makes it easier to um, um, to identify these these goals which all people have in common. What we found in Germany last year was um, there was a tax plan for for freelancers actually about for the pensions, so they should pay for the pension, which probably makes sense, but they only pay taxes to, to get a, a basic social security, and in the end they should pay something uh, for something they will never get back. Um, and uh, then you had to pay um, 300 euro um, bef just before you started any work, and then you also have the health insurance, which is another 250 or 300 euro before you started work. So at the beginning of the month, you're minus 600. <laughs> um, so um, then it's easy to convince people to fight against it. And there was a lot of, uh, there was a petition uh, against it. And we also published an article. And via the, with this article, we reached 120,000 people and 80,000 people signed uh, up a petition and um, out, and then there have been uh, some meetings with the uh, minister of um, the, f um, the minister Ursula von der Leyen, uh, which might be the next chancellor. <laughs> um, Ursula von der Leyen, uh, and she uh, she's a minister a minister of social security, and um, there have been some meetups, and in the end it was cancelled, so it was a success. I, I think I think the, the, it was very interesting to have this point, like uh, doing something with independent people, and um, and fighting against you know public policies and so on is kind of hard because they they are really independent and we don't want to they want to to lose time on this kind of thing even if it's important. But it's something that we we all have here, like all the people in the sharing economy also have this problem because they want to work on their on their company and and you know and make a product and so on. And yes, the the time you've got to take uh, to to fight and to improve the 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 frame, like the frame, the social frame, and all the rules is um, takes a lot of time. And it's maybe we got to focus a bit more on that. But it, I don't know a lot of people doing really going into that. Actually. And I think uh, it's interesting. Um, well, what you said about you know uh, being independent people gathered in the same place. Not to be alone, actually, because it's uh, one of the big uh, motivation to go to a co-working space. Um, and uh, at the same time, uh, doing something together. And I think it doesn't happen in every co-working space. Well, I don't have experience, the experience of many, but uh, I, I was talking to a friend uh, who is living in Copenhagen, and she told me that in her co-working space, um, the guy who created the space didn't really have a, a project for the space, so everybody was coming, and and uh, but nothing really happened between people. And um, it's interesting to and and when we when you were talking about um, um, uh, people from companies coming to co-working spaces, what is funny is that. Um, for example, General Electric is building new headquarters in Paris, 
and I talked to the guy in charge of the project, and he told me, well, we are going to do um, like a co-working space uh, for the you know the um, uh, people of GE, and everything, every relationships are going to be uh, uh, more flexible, easier, and everything. And I was, I was kind of. Um, yeah, skeptical because, uh, you know, the values of G, they have like a chart of values and it's, uh, it's so strict. I mean, you have to sign it and you just can't think about it. And, well, you can't really discuss it. And, uh, so it doesn't, well, the fact that you are trying to create a place where people can cooperate and, um, uh, well, create something new and create and share values doesn't mean that it really happened and yeah well i think uh, the, the thing is i think it's it's uh, creating a space is easy then creating a culture is, is difficult and uh, and uh, that's all the point i mean you've got to 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 think about a culture and uh, and a culture is uh, made of lots of different things it's made of of art, it's made of a language, so you may be inventing some words, or, or you know, it's made of a, of a, of a flag, so some, some some something that you can think of and 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 you know fight for, and uh, you cannot you cannot just open a space. They have been some experiments that were terrible actually with uh, with people. Uh, yes, you can sit anywhere, and people were sitting every day at the same place. <laughs> You know, because it wasn't the culture, so so, and and they were scared, and and they have they had no permission. This permission, like in the in the proximity privacy permission, is very very important. If you if if you say, hey, you can go and and do whatever you want, but you don't feel like you can, you're you're not gonna do it. Like, <laughs> hi, my name is Julian. I'm a student. I work at the Thing right mom, uh, this moment, and I was very interested in what you say. The um, when you compare uh, co-working space or um, with the um, the movement just before the scientific industrial way of product stuff, um, it's very interesting, and it makes me think about what we could call the ancient collaborative economy, which is actually the cooperative economy, which is something very, very ancient. And maybe we could, we could learn a few things about it, and um, mostly about the social um, project you have in a, in a business model or in a co-working space. Uh, maybe we could um, think about something which could be like the, um, the cross between cooperative and collaborative. Um, I, I think, in fact, in your talks, so you were talking about something social. I mean, we need a social project, I think so. And in the 19th century, people were, I mean, had their own, their own tools, and the, the, the industrial movement just stole the tools to people. For many reasons. For many reasons, One but they, now they were getting strong. I mean, they were they were they didn't listen too men, too much to to people that had the capital, like had the money, because they were they yeah. But yeah. also because we were uh, producing massive uh, consumption society, we are getting out of this. That's that's obvious. But we are thinking with ancient patterns. Also, it's it's the tricky stuff, you know. But Maybe we should think about something we don't actually know, and and it's going to work, I think. But we have to rethink the distributed uh, production, but also benefits. No, it's a it's a big topic. I mean, getting inspired about about what has been done before is something we we always do. Like we do, we overdo it. I think at Mitnery, we've we've written a series of articles that is called the places, um, the workplaces that have influenced and changed its history. And we started with the monastery, which was a, a very interesting example. We did we did with the kibbutz, also that is interesting in in Israel, and we did it now with the um, the um, artists' um, work workshops or uh, artists' places, and uh, all these spaces, all these places actually share a lot with with what what's happening in co-working, and uh, so so it's it's super important, I guess, to. To look at these examples, and and uh, it's in French. The articles are in French, so if you if you're interested, you can go and find them. 
otherwise it's going to be a bit harder. Maybe you're going to translate it. Uh, what yeah, what you were th what what you <laughs> what you were uh, speaking of, of I th makes me think of something. Sometimes we explain Mutinog as as a reversed company. You find the place, you find you find a, you find people, you find a place, and maybe you can find projects. And if you if you, and if you take the Mutinog as a as a as a company. It's a, it's a it's a thriving company. You know, people are hiring other stuffs. Lots of projects are are being produced in this uh, place and so on. It's just a matter of uh, of perception. How, do you, how what's what's in and what's out. You can if you take the coworking as movement, and 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 you and you say okay, this is a country. Coworking is a country. Uh, you would see that it is that it's a country that is working very well. And it's producing a lot. It's innovating. It's innovating a lot. Um, people are uh, happy and satisfied. Sometimes a bit stressed, but it's normal. And so, yes, it's it's just a matter of percep perception. When projects um, are being formed in a place, and 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 then create a company, it, it could happen. A coworking space could turn into a company. Yeah. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah, uh, we, we've talked a lot about uh, skills and uh, people who have lots of skills, people who don't. I think maybe it's not the right uh, paradigm <laughs> uh, because everybody has skills, actually. But we are in a system which uh, doesn't allow people to express their skills. And we are lucky to, like, co-working spaces are. And it's, uh, for now, it's... Um, for a minority of workers, but hopefully uh, the situation you describe and the economical crisis and everything uh, is going to um, make yeah make new things ha happen where people uh, can well will be able to e express their skills and the system uh, before the I industrial revolution. Was actually a, uh, actually a system where people, um, you know, they had skills and and they, ex they could express express them um, in their works. So, um, yeah, you also can join the movement. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And. Okay, next time we'll speak about the disconnected work. <laughs> I hope so.